Hi, this is Roger Hamilton, and you're listening to Escape the Rat Race Radio. Welcome to episode 17 of Escape the Rat Race Radio. I'm your host, Christian Rodwell, and this is your ticket to Escape the 9 to 5. It's actually through the action of being an entrepreneur, you then start learning about it, and you can't learn about it from books or, or by going on an MBA. You physically got to get out there and be around other people that are playing the game as well. It's exciting in a way to see those entrepreneurs now basically saying that wealth has gone from an opportunity to really an obligation. It's like everyone has to find a new way because the old way is no longer working. On this week's episode, I'm really, really excited to welcome Roger Hamilton. Now, Roger is the founder of the Entrepreneurs Institute. He's the creator of Wealth Dynamics, Talent Dynamics, Health Dynamics, a whole number of tools to help you understand your flow. What gets you into natural flow? So the things that you should be focusing on the most to achieve the life that you desire. Now, Roger is someone I've been working with personally now for over six months, and he's been supporting me with Escape the Rat Race, helping to build the community. And his wisdom is some of the best entrepreneurial advice out there. And he's been at the forefront of the entrepreneur movement for over 10 years now. He built Vision Villas, which is his home in Bali, which has now had hundreds and hundreds of entrepreneurs visit and spend time there to really get clear on where they need to head with their own future vision to make a big social impact on the world. And I was so excited to invite Roger to speak to us today. Now, Roger is just in the middle of one of his biggest ever promotions, which is the Entrepreneur Movement. And it's a video series which he's putting out there to really show us why now is the time to start becoming in control of our own lives. And the reason why we need to do that is because there's big change happening. Not only is there huge technological advances, but we know that there's been three big crashes already this century. And we've seen it with the dot-com crash in, in 2000. We saw the property crash, the financial crash in 2008. So we need to really be aware of, of how to create a future for ourselves, not to be 100% dependent on a job, someone else paying us, because we just don't know that that job will still be there in the next five years, even in the next one year. So now is the time to really embrace entrepreneurship. And Roger is one of the best people to help you to take that journey. So let's not wait around any longer. Let's head straight to our interview with Roger Hamilton. So welcome to Escape the Rat Race Radio, Roger. How are you today? I'm very good, Christian. Great to be here. It's great to have you here, Roger. And where in the world are you right now? I am in Bali at the moment. At the wonderful Vision Villas, I imagine. Yeah, I am. It's going great. We actually have one of our iLab accelerators on at the moment for health entrepreneurs, which is uh, going very well. Brilliant. Well, Roger, I know that most of the Escape the Rat Race community will be very, very familiar with you. And that's because Wealth Dynamics is at the absolute foundation of, of what we do with our members here. It's, I call, like to call it the entrepreneurial compass because it really helps point you in the right direction, doesn't it? And, and especially when you're looking to make that transition from employee to entrepreneur like so many of our members are. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's like you say, it's a map, it's a language. Uh, it's so important. Whatever new skills someone is picking up, whether it's flying an aeroplane or whether it is playing football, understanding that there's always a language behind each one of these skills and entrepreneurship is exactly the same. And it's just up until now, no one's really created a language for it. So that's really what the whole basis of the Wealth Spectrum with the Wealth Lighthouse, Wealth Dynamics is all based around. Now, you've been at the forefront of entrepreneur education for at least 10 years now. However, you've really noticed that, especially in the last six to 12 months, that there's really been a huge acceleration in awareness globally for, the, for what you're calling now the entrepreneur movement. We actually are right in the midst at the moment of this video series, yeah, we call the entrepreneur movement. And I think it's so interesting how we decided uh, about, 
maybe three months ago, we had to do this series now. And the reason for that was because there was a whole number of things that were taking place, which were the consequences we predicted some time back would eventually happen with any movement. It's like a wave, right? At the beginning, there's the exciting part where those people who actually think maybe I should actually be starting my own business, or maybe I should go traveling the world, they suddenly realize there's other people like them. And we saw that wave from the likes of the co-working growth from like a thousand co-working spaces in 2010 to now over 40,000. And it's like more and more people traveling around the world. We saw that, you know, people coming out to Bali, for example, that, that's, the, that's the positive side of it. But there's also the negative side of, of any disruption which happens, which obviously is happening to those people who are employed that suddenly find that getting a job is actually a lot more difficult, where people are now fearful of their livelihoods. And because of that, they actually end up turning against each other. You know, we end up with people getting elected into power that are saying we're going to build wars, we're going to protect ourselves. Uh, and there's this huge fear that happens because people who haven't seen the new paradigm, they, they don't understand why the old one's breaking down. And when that happens in industries like the media, then you just see everyone leave and go find a job somewhere else. But when it happens at the scale of countries, which is exactly what's happening right now, then the consequences of those are, are, are massive for those who don't understand it because they are going to go and do whatever they can to protect themselves. And it doesn't mean they're going to end up with a job. It doesn't mean they're going to end up figuring it out. But at the same time, you see these things happen. So we saw all this happening this year. And to give you just two examples of where we see it really hitting even the media is just like Two weeks ago, Jack Ma was speaking about the next 30 years and saying it's going to be a time of enormous pain because of the number of people that will be caught out by the shift in the paradigm of what's happening. And as technology continues to improve, as people end up losing jobs, uh, as the shift of wealth and power moves towards developing countries, uh, then you're going to see this you know, huge uh, pain that takes place across generations uh, unless people actually wake up to it and educate themselves differently. And then even just yesterday, Mark Zuckerberg goes and posts about how, as he's traveled around America, the number one lesson that he's got uh, is that it's no longer about people just getting to know the people around them. Because if everyone around you is struggling as well, you're not actually going to break out of it. And so he's saying perhaps in the future, Facebook will be focusing more at how you can find the right mentors or the right communities that actually can lift you out of where you're at and who you don't know right now, but are actually beyond your current circle uh, but you need to actually get educated by or get supported by. And that's obviously everything we're already doing within our entrepreneur movement and within Genius U as well. So it's exciting in a way to see those entrepreneurs now basically saying that wealth has gone from an opportunity to really an obligation. It's like everyone has to find a new way because the old way is no longer working. And obviously through Wealth Dynamics, it, it, it explains that there are eight entrepreneurial profiles and every one person will be one of those profiles. And, and you actually, as you said earlier, you map out the steps that people must follow and, and the things they should focus on and the things they shouldn't focus on in order to create that flow. And you often refer to people feeling like they're going through days and weeks, you know, it's really trying to row upstream and it's hard work until you understand really who you are, what you should be focusing on based on your own strengths and weaknesses yeah definitely i mean that, i think that's one of the biggest things that people start realizing the more you go on an entrepreneurial journey is that it is a journey of self-awareness i think it's really interesting because if someone has a job the echo chamber of how long it takes to actually get feedback about yourself as to whether or not you're doing a good job or not or whether or not you know you're um you're doing you know something which is meaningful i mean it can be years before someone realizes holy cow i've been in a job i haven't been enjoying for years and i've just realized it or like sitting and commuting an hour and a half both ways to, to work is actually not something that i need to do these are things that take years for some people to realize the moment you start a business that echo chamber you know that that sonar ping goes down to basically you know weeks if not days if not hours to say, okay, that clearly didn't work. I need to change what I'm doing. Uh, and so because you're getting that massive increase in speed of feedback, uh, you can actually get to self-awareness much faster because you suddenly realize what is and isn't working because the market gives you immediate feedback. Your life gives you immediate feedback. And most importantly, you've got no one to blame. You can't say, well, the reason I'm having a tough time is because the property market's down or because I've got the wrong government. Or you can't say any of those things because you've got other people around you who are entrepreneurs with exactly the same conditions that you have. And they're being successful. So why, why are they being successful when I'm not? And then you've got to really look inside and realize that at the end of the day, your business is just a mirror of yourself. And once you get that, then you really see that entrepreneurship is almost like being a sailor on a ship or being like, you know, in a football game. You know, it's like you're getting instant feedback from the people around you as long as you're there playing the game. Uh, and that's why I say that, you know, intellectuals are people that need to know in order to do, but entrepreneurs are people that need to do in order to know. It's actually through the action of being an entrepreneur, you then start learning about it. And you can't learn about it from books or, or by going on an MBA. 
you physically got to get out there and be around other people that are playing the game as well. Let's touch on that then, Roger, in terms of the education system, because it really doesn't condition us, does it, for, for a life of entrepreneurship and enterprise. And you're, you're actually taking steps now to disrupt that industry as well. Would you mind sharing a little bit about that? Yeah, I think the two of them are really interrelated. Uh, and I'll share how they're interrelated in, in two very specific ways. The first one is I spent quite a number of years as the chairman of the board of the Green School. So the Green School has become world famous. It's based here in Bali. Uh, it was actually created by a couple, John and Cynthia Hardy. They had a business called John Hardy's, which was a jewelry company, which they sold for over $300 million. They, they basically decided that they wanted their kids to have a different education from what was out there. So they created the Green School, which is basically a cathedral to learning. It's all with bamboo. It's just a beautiful place. Everything is about understanding curiosity and it's understanding how nature provides for everything. I'll give you one example of how that school relates to entrepreneurship. So for example, my kids went to that school. When they were at the school before that, they were getting taught, let's say, for example, art, the way that most kids get taught art, which is here's the paper, here's the paints. Uh, now here's different ways you can paint. What happens to someone even in an art class is they realize that everything's based on dependency, which means I can create art provided I have paper and I have paint. But if I don't have paper and paint, I can't create art which is a little bit like someone saying, I can't make money if I don't have a job. So you effectively got to wait for someone to give you the paper and the paint to get started. What happens at Green School is they start by saying, well, let's talk about colors, right? If we were to make our own paint, how would we do that from nature? And you'd go out there and find you can make purple from beetroot and you could actually, you know, make, you know, yellow from sunflowers. And so, so you actually, they made their own paint. And then after making the paint, then it's like, well, how do we make paper, right? And they made paper out of cow dung. It's like realizing that all the things around you can actually be made into something. So what they learn from a very early age is resourcefulness is the number one key to success in life. If you don't have something, don't wait for it to come to you, but go out there and find that nature already provides. And that's such a powerful message that most people and most kids in education don't have, which is why we become dependent on having to have a job when we get older. And so a lot of those kids end up becoming very entrepreneurial, which is, which is definitely what happened to my kids. So, so that's a fundamental core to it. And a really important connection there is what I believe are the three most important things if you want to change your future. And they come down to where you're showing up, like, you know, with the environment you're going to put yourself in, how you're making sense of that, which is the education you then actually self-educate yourself with, and then how you're going to create a positive impact with your learning, which is what it is to be an entrepreneur. So the three E's, environment education, entrepreneurship, all linked hand in hand, because one of them is about where you're showing up. The second one is about how you make sense of it. And the third one is about how you then make something positive out of it. Uh, for many of us, we're actually showing up already in the wrong place. We're showing up in a city. We're showing up in four wars with a system that doesn't work. And of course, then the education is going to fit around that same regimen. And then we end up basically wondering why we destroy the planet. Whereas if you actually change the environment to start with, and then you shift the way you're, you're, you're being educated, uh, and then from there, you then link that to how you then make a positive impact in the world, then we all can be able to go out there as change makers and make a difference. But that all is about that cycle of all three. And if you're in the vicious loop where you're in the wrong environment or you're being educated the wrong way or you're not even thinking about entrepreneurship, well, then instead of actually creating value in the world, you end up taking it away, which we see happen a lot as well. So the reason that education is so important and that everything that we're doing in the entrepreneur movement links, in fact, the second video, which is coming out shortly, is all about this shift from the one size fits all education, which is all about being the teaching teacher where you're thinking you can get it from a book to personalized education, which is mentorship, which is not trying to teach you the whole map. It's actually teaching you how to get from A to B. So it's a difference of information. If you were to come to me, Christian, and you were to say, okay, Roger, you know, teach me about entrepreneurship. If I was a teaching teacher, I would say, well, let's start at the top. Here's how you start up a company. Here's how you get the marketing going. Here's, and, and, and I'd walk through all those steps as they do if you go to like an MBA or you go to an entrepreneur school, which doesn't mean you can be an entrepreneur because you've just got the whole map of it all and you can still go out tomorrow and say, I still don't know how to get a customer because I don't know who my customer is, right? Uh, however, personalized mentorship is the opposite of that. That's where if you said to me, okay, so, you know, Roger, what's this whole business thing? How do I start a business? Then I don't start by saying, here's how you do it. I start by saying, well, Christian, tell me, about what your purpose in life is. You know, who are you in your passions? What is it that really gets you excited? You know, what is it that would be most meaningful in your life? What, how do you want to design your... I'm starting from where you are uh, and where you want to go and saying, ah, if that's where you are and this is where you want to go, here's some examples of people who've actually done that. Here's what they did different. Here's the lessons they got out of it that you can learn from. And by the way, here's their phone number or their email. Why don't you contact them? So a totally different way of educating because it's no longer about 
education from the point of view of teaching is now self-education from the point of view of mentorship, which is starting from where you are and taking you to where you want to go. And that's, that, that's what personalized education is all about, is how the entire school system will change to go that way as well. But the good news is it's already happening with mentors, where people are finding ways to be apprentices of each other. And if you don't have a community and you don't have a group to get connected with, you can't do this on your own, uh, which is obviously why we're creating this community all over the world right now. Definitely. So, so that leads into the Genius U platform which has been around for, for a number of years now and really gathering pace at a vast, rapid rate. Tell people about this if they haven't yet had the opportunity to go and explore everything. That's, most of it is, is free as well. A lot of it is, is unbelievably wonderful content that's free on Genius U. We had a bit of a vision probably about five years ago when we looked at all of the amazing technology around us from our smartphone to you know, like, you know, YouTube and all the social media platforms. And, and there were people who were as lost today as they've ever been. And it's like, well, how's that when we can actually now have access to all the world's information? And in a way, the problem was too much information. You know, if anyone wants an idea for a business or if anyone wants to know, what, you know, what's Richard Branson's best advice, right? Or, you know, what are the 10 most successful crowdfunding campaigns? Or like you, you can find that out with just a with the click of a button or now just even speaking to your phone. So if it's so easy, why is it that still so many people are so lost? And it's because there's this massive difference between information, where we already have too much information, and direction, which is where we actually have someone helping us to go from where we are to where we want to go. So the vision behind Genius U was really coming down to the core of what it is to have your own magic genie, right? So like in Aladdin and the Lamp, you know, he's got this magic genie that can actually you know, deliver all his wishes. And the word genie, which is actually the genesis for genius, means that each of us has a genie inside of us. We have a genius which is personal to us. So we thought, how great would it be if your smartphone, your iPhone or your Samsung phone, if it became your genie? If you had someone there who says, hey, Roger, you're passionate about the environment. You know, you're heading to New York. Here's the one person you should connect with in New York who also is passionate about the environment. And he's actually looking for someone just like you because he's trying to grow in Asia. And here's his contact details. And if you want, I can connect you right now. I would definitely be excited about you know, having someone like that where every day my genie can tell me who I should connect with. And at the same time saying, hey, Roger, there's like another million and a half articles that came out today on education. Here's the number one that you should read because this is the one that's not just most ideal for people interested in education. This one's ideal for someone who lives in Bali, who's created a profile, um, who happens to be at blue level in the spectrum, which means I'm spending all my time investing in things. This is the number one article you should read right now. Uh, I would love to have a genie that could do that. And then also to say, and here's the mission or the micro degree that you should be taking right now uh, that would allow you to learn how to build your business in China, because that's where you want to take your business right now. By the way, artificial intelligence has got powerful enough to give us those tools. Uh, the reason that Google and Facebook and so on do not give us that direction today is almost all the artificial intelligence, all the AI is backward facing, which means it's basically looking at your past habits. And we all know transformation doesn't come by following your past habits. It comes from starting new habits up, which are the ones you're not following right now. And the only way that can happen is that we've got future facing AI where it can actually know, oh, Christian, this is, you know, I now know where you want to go because you took the purpose test. I now know what your passions are because you took the passion test. You know, I now know what your biggest interests are because you told me. So I'm now going to then share with you who do you need to know? What do you need to do based on that? So that's the vision behind Genius U. Where Genius U is today is we're on we're track right now. We're just about to hit 700,000 people on the platform. Uh, we're going to be up to about a million within three months. At the moment, we are we were at the beginning of this year getting close to about 1,000 people per day who are joining. We're now well over 1,000 people a day and it's growing every day as well. And they're all entrepreneurs. They're all coming onto the platform and sharing this data about themselves to say, you know, like uh, I'm taking my test to find out what my passions are, what my purpose are. So they're actually doing all of those. And we're now taking all that information. And within the next month, we're launching Genie. And you're going to be able to choose your own Genie. You can have your Blaze Genie or your Dynamo Genie. You're going to be able to, you know, with the Genie, have that Genie every day, you know, tell you exactly who you should connect with, you know, what, what you should learn, where you should even show up in terms of events that you can actually attend in different uh, cities around the world. Uh, and so you've actually got that guidance and you've got those superpowers now unlocked within you every single day to take you to where you want to go. So if someone goes in today, when we're having this interview today in May, uh, they'll see lots of content. They'll see lots of people interacting. Uh, but what you'll see within a month is going to be a genie guiding you based on all that information. And you can go explore, browse around if you like, or you can just say, hey, genie, uh, right, so what should I do today? And genie will then tell you, which is pretty awesome. And I'm really excited to see that launch in the coming months. 
Yeah, it's so cool. And, and I've been using the platform for, for a long time now. And I'm one of the, the genius mentors on there. And, and it also links very nicely now with the entrepreneur socials, which have recently launched around the world. Would you like to share just how that came about as well and what your vision is for the entrepreneur socials? Yeah, definitely. I think one of the most important things is that all of the most successful, fastest growing companies in the world are no longer online or offline companies. They're really offline or real companies uh, selling real products, but connected with online systems. So that's how Uber does it, right? Uber is not digesting virtual products. You're actually getting on a ride. Airbnb does the same thing. And Amazon clearly does the same thing in terms of buying products. And they're even setting up retail stores. So we looked at the whole entrepreneur movement and said, we want to facilitate it with Genius U as an online platform that connects us together. But we actually are doing this to have human connections. And we already run our fast forward events. Uh, we already have our entrepreneur resorts and beach clubs that we're launching around the world. This Monday, I uh, just got final approval from the Seychelles Stock Exchange for our IPO. And we're now in the final stages of our private placement for the IPO, which all happens in the next month as well. So everything's happening right now. And so we're creating locations for entrepreneurs. And what we noticed is, yes, we're doing that in amazing locations and in places that need it all over the world. But what about cities like London? What about cities like Seattle? What about you know, cities like, you know, Oslo, like, like, what about there? How do people show up if they want to be making a difference? They want to connect with each other. Yes, there are entrepreneur events that exist in different places. Yes, there are some networks like TEDx, or like Startup Grind that do exist for certain groups of people. But if you're a social entrepreneur that wants to make a big impact, where can you actually go where you know, you're not just tapping into the local community of entrepreneurs in your city, but you're also connecting with a global connection of entrepreneurs all over the world, where everyone is aligning themselves to the United Nations global goals to transform education, to provide equality for everyone, to you know support the environment. Like, like where can you go? And the answer was nowhere. So in January, we went out to our network and we said, who would like to actually come on board, who already we trust to get things done and set up an entrepreneur social, which is effectively one evening every month when we have a social entrepreneur, like so someone who's making a difference in the world, who's going to be giving a talk and where everyone can then actually connect with each other and that we facilitate it. So, you know, it's been great that you've taken that on for London and, you know, you've seen already like just how many people want to get connected together. And if anyone's listening to this and you haven't actually been to one of the entrepreneur socials or you can get along to the London one, definitely do it because it's so inspiring getting in front of everyone there. And we just had the first one in Bali, which got run at our Genius Cafe, which is our beach club. And it was just amazing, the conversation that took place, the number of high quality social entrepreneurs that were looking to make a difference in the world that now had a home of where they could connect with each other. What's going to be happening in the coming months is with your Genius U, I'll be able to go into one of those entrepreneur socials and I'll be able to see who's the number one person I should connect with right now based on who I am and based on what they're looking for. Uh, and so we're going to be able to facilitate you know, using this technology layer far more effective connections so you're not wasting your time speaking to everyone in the room to figure out where you can actually have the right opportunity but you're actually finding the right people in the right way to be able to get the right stuff done right now that's the idea behind it definitely and it's, it's been an absolute privilege to uh, to launch london with myself and Kay reynolds we've had some really really great fun events and i know michelle was was down at the first one when we kicked off in january i'm now actually testing the whole remote working lifestyle myself and as you know i've, I've just recently moved over to lisbon which is where i am right now when we're recording this yeah so anyone listening who, who wants to come and get involved in london definitely you know i'm looking to grow and expand that team as well so please do connect with me and it's an exciting exciting time and of course you've just released the first video in the entrepreneur movement which was the rise of the entrepreneur that was a wonderfully shot video which you were you were giving us the guided tour of vision villas and, and really explaining uh, everything around that which was so great and your facebook live yesterday which i really really enjoyed how was the first your experience of your first facebook live there Roger? It was amazing. I mean, I was I was just amazed at just how many people were interacting and and just how global it was. I mean, we had people from all over the world that were all posting in there during it. I hadn't even figured out that when you click on the video, you actually see all the comments. So I could only ever see like five comments at a time. I'm like, oops, I'm be asking questions. But it just went so well, and we had such a vibe. Uh, and for anyone who's looking to build community. Uh, there's been this massive trend uh, that some of you might already be into, which is if you're creating a trend or a a series, like in this case, it was our video series, setting up a Facebook group and then inviting people in, making it a closed group. And so that you really, you know, have every person coming in needing to be accepted into that group. 
Uh, that's been phenomenal. We, we actually launched the Entrepreneur Movement Facebook group only, I think it was l- less than two weeks ago. It, was, it wasn't that long ago at all. It's already like now hitting over 7,000. I think it's going up to 8,000 members in there. Uh, there's no question by the time we finish the series, it's going to be up to fifteen or 20,000 people already. Uh, and the people registering for the actual video, we've got over 1,000 a day. They're putting comments in there. And again, they're from all over the world. And I think that's just testament to the fact that this entrepreneur movement is truly global. Everyone's got the same challenges, but everyone also has the same desires of wanting to be part of the solution. So if anyone's listening, thinking, you know, things are tough, how can I actually even go out there and change the world if I'm still trying to change my business? The answer is the more you already surround yourself with people who are in flow or who are looking to support each other, the easier it is to solve your smaller problems by thinking about bigger problems. And I just definitely recommend that no one goes out there trying to figure it out on your own, thinking, well, later in, later in my life, I'll be in a chance to give. You know, knowing even today, uh, if you're in a community or, or like, for example, perfect example is in that group uh, and on our Facebook Live, the number of people helping each other already to say, oh, I've had that experience. You, you know, you're having trouble starting your business up or you're having trouble, you know, like, like figuring out how to get the right mentors. Like, here's my experience. Here's what I did. And, and you realize there's a limit to what you can get, but there's no limit to what you can give. So the moment that you get into that kind of community and you're already giving and supporting others, it actually then sweeps you up in your own momentum. It builds confidence. You know, it builds uh, uh, a real sense of connection and the fact you're not on it on your own. And then, of course, it means that you're 10 times more effective when you're then focusing on your own business issues as well. So that's one of the biggest things I say is, you know, success is not how committed you are to your own success. Because you can be really committed to your own success, but be surrounded by other people who aren't. You know, it's like a seed that wants to grow that's sitting on concrete. It's not going to grow. So success is not how much you're committed to your own success. It's how much you're surrounding yourself by other people who are committed to your success, which is why, you know, winning teams at football, you know, they win because the whole team wants everyone else to win. Uh, And I think that's one of the most important things is surround yourself with the right people. Uh, And that's what I see happening within the entrepreneur movement. Yes, it's a video series. You know, yes, it is things like Facebook Live. But frankly, I'm just a conduit for people getting connected to each other. uh, And then that's where the real magic happens. That's the, the path that I've been following with Escape the Rat Race. And we've been working together now closely for, for the last six months or so. And it's about building that community and trust. And, and one thing you mentioned yesterday in your Facebook Live was that you have to almost look at it like a mountain where you have people who are slightly further towards the peak who, you know, you want to grab hold of them and, and learn from them and learn from their mistakes and, and be taught by them and mentored. But don't forget to have that arm stretched out behind you as well and pulling pulling those up behind you who are slightly slightly just a couple of steps behind on their journey. Exactly. I think that's the most important thing. I mean, think about it. If, if, if you're an experienced climber and if you see two hands reaching up to you and one hand reaching up to you is some guy who's got his hand reaching up to you and he's just himself just like saying, hey, give me a hand up. And the other hand reaching up to you, you can see that that person is holding on to two other people behind. You know, which hand are you going to take first? You're going to take the one where the guy is holding on to two more hands. He's like, I can do more of a difference helping him because he's then helping them. And, you, and you'll go back to the other guy afterwards if he's still there, but you're going to go for that first one first because you're going to make a bigger difference. So don't for a moment think uh, if, you're, if you're trying to reach out for someone to help you that you can't already be helping someone else because the people that actually get helped are already the people helping others. And that's a lesson that a lot of people forget. They're so busy trying to help themselves. They're wondering, why is no one else helping me? And it's because you're so busy helping yourself, no one else is going to, right? But the more you go help other people, the more you're going to find people reaching their hand out to help you too. When you're holding your hand out both ways, it's amazing how many people then help you to do that because they can see that you're part of a chain which is going to have an impact on their lives as well. And there was something else as well that came out of that video when I was watching it yesterday. I think it's a really important point, one that you've shared with me as well, is that so many people who are starting in business come up with a great idea and just get really excited, really busy and work, work away on this idea, maybe start investing money in prototypes. But that's not the right way to go about starting a business, is it? Would you mind telling us why? Yeah, definitely. It's, it's because it's because a business isn't a business because it has a product. A business is a business because it has a customer. So you know a business is a business because someone's paying you money. Bill Gates didn't start by saying, I'm just going to create amazing software. He started by getting IBM to say, I, we've got a problem and we're looking for a system and we're willing to pay you $50,000 for it. And and from there, he could start Microsoft, right? Which is how Microsoft got started by having a customer, not by having a product. As it was, he didn't even have the product. He had to go out and buy the product from someone up in Canada. And that became MS-DOS. And every great, like Richard Branson did exactly the same thing. You know, he didn't start by saying, I'm just going to go out there and, uh, you know, come up with an idea. He went and saw there was a real need of students to have a magazine. He set up the student magazine. 
he saw there was a real need for, you know, musicians to actually have a way to get the music out. So, you know, he ended up, you know, getting the Sex Pistols and Mike Oldfield published. And that's all about basically going to where there's someone who has a need and solving that need. And too often people get so wrapped up in what's my product going to be and why is no one buying my product? Today is an awful lot easier finding a customer and finding out what they need and selling them that than it is having a product and then going out chasing customers who don't have time to speak to you anyway to try and get them to buy the product that they didn't even want to buy in the first place, right? So, so, so important. When I see anyone struggling, it's almost always because they're falling more in love with their product than they are with their customer. And the moment they actually just let go of their product and say, like, it doesn't actually matter about my product. It it matters about the customer and what their problem is. And I'm just going to focus at that. And the moment you do, you're going to find there's ways for you to solve their biggest problem, which probably is quite different from whatever it is that you're thinking of for your product right now anyway. And even before that, it may be they're not even out of their own personal problems in terms of maybe finances. And and that is where the Wealth Lighthouse and Wealth Spectrum really comes into play. And we've not touched on that yet. Would you mind just giving anyone who's not familiar with the Wealth Lighthouse yet? And of course, you cover this in some detail in the first video, The Rise of the Entrepreneur. But would you mind explaining the whole concept of, of understanding the different levels and how being at one level is a different set of rules to, to being able to get to the next level? Well, the best way to to explain the nine levels of the Wealth Lighthouse without going into a lot of detail on it is if someone's going to learn to ski, uh, they wouldn't start up in the black run. And they certainly wouldn't just jump on the mountain and hope that they actually find a way down, which is their level, because that's the biggest challenge with entrepreneurship is so many people just like get on the mountain, point their skis down and hope for the best. And then the number one thing that you lose is the number one thing you need to keep, which is your confidence, right? Because if you end up with a slope, which is too fast, you know, if you end up getting in other people's way, you lose your confidence very, very quickly as a result. So don't, whatever you do, you know, get onto a mountain without a peace map, right? A peace map has got different colors for different runs. So the so nine levels of the Wealth well, Lighthouse are the nine different colors of the nine different runs that you need to have. And you've got to start in the nursery slope. And the very, very first ones that you need to actually get right are your personal finances. Is how do you, so there's three which are your foundation prism. And I'm not going to go through them all right now because they are in the video. But the three which are your foundation prism is how do you make sure that you're actually able to be stable in your own finances because that's the only way you can even earn the right to get into a business in exactly the same way that you've got to learn how to swim before you're going to earn the right to be on the crew of a ship. And a lot of people want to just shortcut that part to say, I don't need to worry about swimming. I'm going to be on a ship anyway. But no single crew in the world will take you on to their crew if you don't know how to swim. And in exactly the same way, too many people try and start a business where they're going to be managing the finances of a business and they don't even manage their own personal finances. They're in personal debt. You know, they're basically living from week to week, month to month. And now they're trying to start a business. And that's like someone drowning, trying to build a boat, right? It's like the wrong time to do it. And no one's going to get in the boat anyway. So if you get that right, people go, oh my gosh, no wonder my business isn't working. I haven't sorted my own personal finances out first. I got to do that first. And then I'm going to then attract the right people and the right resources for my business. Then the next three are all about the, uh, enterprise prism. So the first three are the foundation prism, which is your personal flow. The next three are your enterprise prism, which is where all the money in the market flows. And then the final three is the alchemy prism, which is how the whole society global flow takes place to go out and change the world. And many people want to change the world, but you have to earn your way up there, just like you have to earn your way to the black run by first of all, going through the green slope, the blue slope, the red slope, uh, and each time build your confidence In skiing, there's only one type of trust you need to worry about, which is your internal trust, which is your confidence. In entrepreneurship, there's actually two types of trust. There's the internal trust, which is your confidence, but there's also the external trust, which is your credibility. And too many people go out saying, I've got to start a business. I've got to sell my product. They have zero credibility. No one's buying from them. Everyone says, good luck. Everyone says, that's a great idea, but no one's actually giving you money. And you're living off those fumes thinking, well, that means I must have a good idea. When it doesn't, that's like someone showing up on the black run, never having skied before, saying, I'm going to ski the slope. And everyone goes, good luck, you know, you know, you know, well done. And then they're off, right? Why? Because they see you as a liability. They're too polite to tell you. They're off doing their own thing. But the reason you realize that, it's like the moment you realize that, it's like, holy cow, I need to shift my strategy into one where I'm able to play the game with everyone else as opposed to trying to do it all on my own. Uh, so without going into more detail, that there is a map and there is a step-by-step when it comes to entrepreneurship. And everyone needs to understand every one of those steps if they're actually going to be successful as an entrepreneur. Obviously, it helps so much to see the visual lighthouse and the spectrum there. And and so I highly encourage everyone, just go to the show notes. I'll make sure the link for that first video, Rise of the Entrepreneur, is there. Go and watch that video now and you'll see Roger explain all of that. 
So Roger, we're fast approaching our time now. It's gone so quickly and it's been such an enjoyable conversation with you. I'd like to just ask you before we end, what would be your advice for our listeners now who are in the rat race? Maybe they're stuck in a traffic jam on the way to work or on the bus and they just feel like they're going through the motions. They're not living to their full potential. They just don't feel like they're contributing everything that they can do. Maybe it's fear that's holding them back, not quite sure what the next step is or which path to take. What would be your advice, some real actionable steps for those listeners? The number one thing is for anyone listening to this where you're currently mulling over, you know, should I make a step out of this? You know, what's the big steps? For a lot of people, they think I just have to quit everything. And then it's like, but I can't because I've got a mortgage to pay. So there's this whole thing that happens where people believe it's all or nothing. That's the seductive media-driven image of an entrepreneur, which is I risked everything, I threw it all in. And, and that never happens. The people that risk everything, they've already got connections, they've already got goodwill, they've already got a track record, they have a level of confidence where they know they can get going again. But the number of people I know who just quit their job, and straight after quitting, they're on their own, and then they suddenly get freaked out, and then they can't even get another job. That's not the path to take. So it's really important as the number one thing is to realize that Superman does not get paid to be Superman, right? Like Superman still has to go and be Clark Kent. If Clark Kent just showed up being Clark Kent the whole time, that would defeat the object of the fact that he could also be Superman, right? But Clark Kent's very aware that he needs to go earn some money, which is going to allow him to, with his Clark Kent time, have enough cash that he can then go and afford to pay for the cape and the stretchy pants, right? So, so he does that for however many days of the week he needs to do it or for how many hours of the day. Then he spends the rest of the time as Superman and that's what drives him forward, right? That's what actually saves the world. And, and it's really important for you if you're sitting in the car, if you're sitting at home and you're thinking, I'm going to go to work tomorrow to say, how do I reduce my, my, my clock and time without getting rid of all of it so that I can't even pay the bills? How do I reduce it from like five days a week to four days? Or how do I cut down that time? And how do I maximize my Superman time? Because you can be in a nine to five job and you still got a lot of time for Superman. You can be Superman in the evenings, you can be Superman on the weekends. But the most important thing about that Superman time is you're not trying to be Superman on your own. You're getting around other people who already have taken the steps that you want to take. You're not trying to read it from a book. You're listening to the likes of what Christian does and you're connecting with him and his and the people within his network. You're coming along for the entrepreneur socials. You're getting in front of other people and you're asking them questions. How did you get from where I am to where you're going? And you'll find each of them have their own personal story in the same way you can't get out of it by just copying someone. You're going to have your own personal story too. But if you're willing to be okay with some Clark Kent time, with some Superman time. And your goal is that through that Superman time, you're going to find ways to make money, even if it's not your per perfect business, even if it's not, you know, like your own idea. But by working with an entrepreneur that actually needs your help with your skills, where you can be earning some money by helping them out, becoming an entrepreneur in the process by being part of an entrepreneurial team, to the extent that you actually start making more money from that than your job, then you can quit your job. My experience is if someone goes through that, within three months or less, you could be totally out of whatever you're doing right now that you don't want to do. Now think about that, right? Three months ago, like we're May right now, right? So three months ago was February. You probably remember what you're doing in February. And if it's nothing different from what you're doing now, and it's not your perfect life, well, imagine in three months from now, you know, by the time you get to August, you're already living a life which is way more the way you want to live, right? Like, isn't it worth putting that extra time in now to have Superman time alongside that Clark Kent time? Even if you're exhausted at the end of the day thinking, I don't have any effort, to, like, there's nothing more I can do. Keep the fact that within three months, it could be totally different. And if you just do that, you'll be amazed when you get around the right people and you start hearing their stories and you start getting inspired by that, how much your normal changes from the normal it is today, which is this okay living a life, which isn't my ideal life, to one where it's like, nope, that's not okay anymore. It's now time to change. Uh, but always know it's going to be around your environment. So change your environment first, then your education, the way you're actually learning about that environment, and then entrepreneurship, how you then make a difference now that you've actually made sense of that new environment that you're in. That would be my advice, Christian. Yeah, and, and there's so many stories to prove that within the Entrepreneur's Mastermind and, and all of the communities, um, real life stories of, of when people get focused and clear, and as you say, get the right people around them, amazing things can happen very, very quickly. Exactly. Yeah. So Roger, one of the first things you asked me when we started working together was to really think hard about my future vision. And my final question to you is, what's yours? Well, my future vision is that as my kids get older, because my daughter 
Kathleen is now 21 years old. My son Luke just graduated from school last week, actually. Uh, he's 18 years old now. So, and then Teresa is in the middle of those two. They're all in university or going to university. You know, they're all kind of like going through the existing traditional education system. You know, what I see is that by the time they have their kids, which is only going to be maybe, who knows, maybe five years from now, you know, maybe 10, but somewhere in that region, you know, by the time we get to 2020 or 2025, that already by that point, entrepreneurship is a more accepted pathway in life than in being an employee. That's my vision. That's what I'd love to see. I believe that if that happens within the next five to 10 years, which I really do believe at this point, we're heading towards that very quickly, then a lot of the problems that we have in the world, whether they're the challenges around poverty, inequality, whether the challenges around how we're treating the environment, how we're treating everyone equally, I think all of these different areas start resolving themselves when we stop waiting for someone else to take the action and when we actually become resourceful enough amongst ourselves to be the solution. That's my dream. That's what I see as the vision for my future to be a part of that movement is happening already. And, and I see it being at a scale where within five years, we're going to have over a billion entrepreneurs on the planet. We're currently going through the number one greatest vocational shift that's ever taken place in history. We have more entrepreneurs by the time we get to 2020 than there were even working jobs in the year 1900. So we're, we're seeing this massive shift. My vision in all of this is that we collectively are seeing that the days where we were disempowered and creating a, a world and, an, and a civilization that we were not proud of will be reversed and we will be very, very excited about the next generation coming. Well, for myself personally and on behalf of all the Escape the Rat Race listeners, I'd like to thank you, Roger, for everything that you're doing to accelerate this really exciting entrepreneur movement. I'm fully behind it and, and, and alongside you on this one. I look forward to the next videos which will be released and to a very, very bright future. Fabulous. Thank you very much, Christian. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Thank you, Roger. Well, I hope you enjoyed that conversation as much as I did. Now, I've been working with Roger, as I mentioned at the beginning, for a number of months now. And some of his wisdom has truly embedded itself within my teachings for our members of Escape the Rat Race. No matter what level you're at, there's always a step-by-step -step process to get you to the next level. And, and that's where we touched on with the Wealth Lighthouse. And if you haven't watched that first video, The Rise of the Entrepreneur, then head to the show notes now and click the link and watch that. And by the time you're listening now, there probably will be the next second and third videos which will be available, which go into the power of having a mentor and of finding the right community. Now, of course, you're hopefully already a member of the Escape the Rat Race Facebook community. We have our own private Facebook group. If you're not already a member of that, then please head to Facebook now, search for Escape the Rat Race or hashtag ETRR and you'll find the group there please click to join and we'll accept you into our group. And if you're in London, then come along to one of our monthly meetups. Our meetups take place on the first Wednesday of every month and we invite different speakers, people that I know have been helpful in my personal journey and that can help you too. It's about inspiring you to take that next step or maybe even that first step. And you'll be supported by like-minded individuals who are on that same journey. So don't be afraid Come along, join and learn and experience from all of that. So if you enjoyed the interview with Roger, I'd love for you to leave us some positive feedback, maybe a nice comment or a, a rating on iTunes. Again, just go to iTunes or on uh, Google Play and search for Escape the Rat Race Radio. And please, I'd love it if you could share the words and help others learn from all of these wonderful entrepreneurs, business owners and marketing experts that I'm inviting to share with us every two weeks on Escape the Rat Race Radio. If you have any questions, please do reach out. You can head over to the Escape the Rat Race official website, which is www.etrr.online. And you can send us a message and you can see all of the different programs and free training that we have on there to help you get clear on what your path to freedom is going to be. That's it for this week's episode. I look forward to catching up with you again in two weeks time. Until then, see ya.